In the middle of a field in Montana, deep in the woods of a protected forest or maybe tucked under the eaves of a farmhouse in France, there's a bee colony living what is essentially the dream life. They live together in a giant house that they built themselves. Their days are filled with purpose and their nights are spent with friends and family. It's an insect utopia, a perfectly functioning society, a well-oiled machine. And it's made up of thousands of tiny parts that fit together in ways that we are only just beginning to understand. A single bee colony can be thought of as a sort of superorganism. All of its members work together for the good of the whole. And even though individual bees have fairly simple minds, the collective intelligence of the entire group is astounding. This is what it would sound like if a bee colony were a pop song. Now let's get into it. There are three kinds of bees in a colony, queens, drones, and workers. But really the drones are just bit players who only exist to fertilize eggs. The real stars of the show are the two types of female bees, and it's easy to tell them apart because there's only one queen. She's the mother of every other bee in the hive, and her job is to lay eggs. She can lay up to 2,000 of them a day. That's a lot of baby bees. And unlike human babies, bee babies don't stick around the house for 18 years. When they're old enough, they leave the hive and get their own place. Except they move into a honeycomb instead of an apartment building, and they bring their lunch to work every day. The other female bees are workers, and to say they have a lot to do would be an understatement. Workers handle nearly every task necessary to keep the colony going. They clean up after everybody. They feed the larvae and make more honey. They build the hive and guard it against intruders. They even do the dangerous work of finding food outside the hive, which means there isn't much time for a worker bee to sit around and smell the roses. But luckily, they don't need to because the roses are their office. And speaking of offices, while worker bees might share tasks, they also specialize. Like in any big company, some workers are better at certain jobs than others. As bees grow older, they take on age-appropriate responsibilities. Younger workers do menial tasks like cleaning and processing pollen. As they approach middle age, they become foragers, flying out of the hive to find flowers that are full of nectar and bring them back to the colony. And as they enter their twilight years, they start storing food and guarding the nest. Specialization like this allows the colony to do more than it could if everyone did everything which is actually how a lot of ant colonies work. But not all communication happens with words. Humans aren't the only animals that use gestures to express themselves. Bees do it too. In fact, bees have several different styles of dance. They use a type of wiggle dance to tell other bees about potential predators that could be lurking nearby. And when a bee finds a particularly great source of pollen or nectar, they might do a little happy dance called the waggle dance. This is something like the Macarena for bees. A bee performs the waggle dance by waggling its abdomen from side to side and moving in a figure-eight pattern. The angle that the bee makes relative to the vertical tells other bees the angle of the sun from where the food source is. So if the bee is pointed 45 degrees to the right of vertical, then the food source is 45 degrees to the right of the sun. Basically, the bee is saying, Hey guys, come with me to this really great patch of flowers because they're full of nectar and they're over there like this far away from the hive. To help the foragers find the best food sources, these dances can include details like how much nectar there is at the plant or whether the plant has recently been visited by another bee. And they're surprisingly accurate. When the bees in one study were told that the food source was in the wrong direction, they corrected their course mid-flight to follow the dance instructions. And this communication style works despite the fact that bees don't actually talk to each other. They send their messages to anybody who will listen. Like a bee doing the waggle dance doesn't know exactly who its audience is. Any observers heading out to forage will use the information to update their mental map of the area and decide where to go next. That makes this form of communication something like gossip. Individual bees might not be trying to share information with anyone in particular, but when they do, the rest of the colony benefits. Bees aren't the only animals that communicate this way. Honeybees, bumblebees, Wasps and ants use pheromones to mark trails to food. Honeybee colonies even work together to defend their hives from stinging wasps. All of these behaviors require coordination, but none of them are as impressive as what happens when the temperature in the hive gets too cold or too hot. If the temperature drops below around 10 degrees Celsius or rises above 35 degrees, the bees in the colony will work together to bring it back down to a comfortable level. 
This is important because higher temperatures can destroy the proteins that the bees need to survive. It would be nice if they could just turn the thermostat down, but since they can't, worker bees shiver to generate heat and they increase the amount of time that they spend in the center of the hive, which makes a bigger mass that retains more heat. And when the hive is too hot, they fan their hive to create a breeze. Bees perform these thermoregulation strategies constantly. When scientists monitored one hive in the middle of winter, they found that bees maintained a constant temperature within one degree Celsius. And when the temperature outside dropped dramatically, bees increased the frequency of their shivering behavior until it was about 10 times higher than normal. If you ever hear your house is too cold, you should just ask a bee if it can shiver. But perhaps the most impressive thing about these superorganisms is their ability to adapt to changing circumstances. Backslash. When a bee colony decides to move to a new hive, the process starts with a small group of bees scouting out potential new homes. After they find a few promising candidates, they return to the hive and present their findings to the group. Then the other bees vote with their feet. They leave the old hive and check out the new options. And once they've inspected the sites, they head back again and deposit chemicals there that indicate how they feel about each option. Once enough bees have voted with their feet, the colony moves. Not all changes are so amicable. When the queen bee dies, the worker bees won't just carry on as normal. Instead, they'll start raising a new queen. This starts with selecting a larva that's less than three days old and feeding it a special substance called royal jelly. Royal jelly is made by special glands in the heads of nurse bees, and it's what turns a regular larva into a queen. Worker bees fed this way grow up to be queens. Meanwhile, if a queen bee isn't laying enough eggs, the workers will stop feeding the larvae royal jelly and make her into a drone instead. Even though individual bees might not be all that smart, they live in one of the most complex social systems in nature. Theirs is a world of cooperation, specialization, and precise communication. And while we're only just beginning to understand it, we know that without all three, the whole thing would fall apart. That's it for now. What other animal have you always wondered about? Let me know in the comments below, and maybe we'll tackle your suggestion in a future video. Thanks for watching.